delegates and panelists for joining the session before time. My name is Megha Ayer, Associate Editor of B2B Projects Magazine, and we welcome you to an interactive procurement series on ideas for better roads and bridges. Thank you, Megha. By 2022, the government plans to build 65,000 kilometer of national highways at the cost of 5.35 lakh crore. The Indian government has set aside 111 lakh crore for the national infrastructure pipeline till the fiscal year 2025. Over the fiscal years 2019 and 2025, the road sector is expected to account for 18% of capital expenditure. India has the world's second largest road network spanning 5.89 million kilometers. Despite the pandemic and lockdown, India has successfully developed 13,298 kilometers of highways. With this level of progress in the construction and infrastructure sector, roads and bridges will continue to be the primary driving demand drivers for asphalt plants and asphalt pavers in India. On this note, B2B Purchase, as part of its procurement series, is having this interactive session on ideas for better roads and bridges. Delegates, it's an honor for me to introduce you our distinguished panelists, Mr. Munish Taneja, President, India Bull Store One, and Mr. Vikas Sharma, Director, Genesis Infra Projects Consultant and Managing Director of Kamache Constructions Private Limited. I would like to invite Ms. Mega to join us for this session. Thank you, Ritesh. Thank you, panelists. Uh, Mr. Munish, I would like to start with you. The Indian government intends to build 65,000 kilometers of roads in 2023. So I believe this will further have an influence on the carbon footprints created at the project locations. So how are sustainable materials and equipments assisting you in reducing the pollution levels? Mega, I think it's a very relevant question today because everybody is concerned about the pollution being you know, increasing and climate change is happening due to that. So I believe that you know, uh, all the OEMs as well as, uh, you know, the material suppliers, they are all working towards, you know, better technologies, uh, having BS4 and then slowly graduating to BS higher series also, where we can reduce this pollution level and having better quality of fuel is also very important. As we get a good quality of fuel, then also the uh, pollution can be taken care of. But apart from that, you know, some of the other things which are today in our control at the project site level is, uh, you know, not throwing away the waste or used material, keeping it properly or discarding it or disposing it through the right uh, process. That is very important because, you know, if you go to the project sites, usually the materials or the cement bags or oils or, you know, the waste material are being thrown on the roads or around the project. So that should be avoided. Uh, but overall, in terms of the technology, I would say that, you know, we are moving into the right path where in future, the productivity as well as the pollution uh, is, you know, coming down as in terms of the equipments being used. And if you see today, the batching plants also or crushers also, they are also of a higher grade where they have minimum pollution as compared to the equipments which were five or 10 years back. Thank you, Mr. Munis. Uh, for you sharing your views. Mr. Vikas, would you, how do you look at it, this aspect from a uh, uh, sustainable solutions point of view? Uh, in terms of solutions for uh, constructions, roads. For roads, uh, I have shared my details and uh, I think uh, it depends upon uh, where you want to make the roads, whether it is highway or city roads. If you are going for highways or expressways, stone metric asphalt or bituminous road is the best. And for city roads, thin white topping or white topping is the best, in my suggestion. Because we are using mastic asphalt, which is not recommended. Actually, in rainy season, it gets slippery and there are accidents. Thank you, Mr. Vikas, for adding those comments and the climate disasters also that, some, that impacts the road construction. Mr. Muniz, how are the innovations in equipments and materials allowing you to meet the project timelines while maintaining the quality and dependability of the final product? Uh, see, if you see, uh, the equipments are very important factor in you know any construction project today. And uh, if you select the right quality and the quantity, because uh, you know there are different manufacturers there. So depending on your uh, project requirement you have to see you know what is the volume you have to handle how much per day or per uh, you know month 
progress you want so accordingly you have to plan for the number of equipments you require at site but as i said earlier in my presentation also you know these things usually all the companies will plan but they are always unknown or you know some surprise factors are there due to which you have to adapt to the site condition so again for those uh, you know you should be always having plan to keep or bring these machines on short notice and execute your projects as per the site condition and also in terms of equipment uh, you know the technology should be used more in terms of getting the better quality of roads if you see the roads you know getting the you know smooth layer or the right curves or the right angles on the road is also very important and if you use the technology well or you know you have the skilled manpower who can utilize or make full use of this technology then we can have better you know sustainable and good quality of infrastructure you very well mentioned sir all these things also call for skill you mentioned about skill development also so what kind of training do you believe do you think is available for operators especially for those who are operating from the remote locations or the geographically challenging areas mega i think that's one of a big challenge today for you know all the construction companies or the equipment Uh, rental or leasing players to get a uh, good quality or trained uh, manpower for the operation and maintenance uh, see usually uh, in past or in the older period you can see the people who were only trained on site they were you know uh, working with the trained operator the helpers used to get trained and graduate to the operators or same way the mechanics or electrician used to get their training but that takes lot of time and it's not uh, you know it's not necessary that he gets the right uh, skills also because it depends again on the person under whom he is training but uh, you know for us like we take help of our oems uh, so we are you know working with the oems we try to usually fix some training programs in a year where uh, we will call the oem on the paid basis or sometimes on uh, non paid basis to come on the site do one or two days training of our operators as well as uh, you know show their technologies to the customer see because if technology is there and customer is not convinced then we cannot do much on that so it is very important that those technologies are also demonstrated and explained to the project team so that they can use those and they can uh, you know utilize them better so we take care of uh, oem facilities or oem engineers or trainers apart from that we also have our in house team who are doing uh, you know half yearly or annual training programs for our operation team at our yards where we are telling them about the safety operation maintenance and as well as the technical knowledge on the equipment thank you mr mohan and also uh, to add it more to it um, you also mentioned about uh, raw materials so now that we are back from the covid era but still there are a lot of geopolitical situations implying that are adding challenges to us so what kind of uh, obstacles do we have right now at this point of time in procuring raw material especially uh, when we are in planning stage or in a commissioning stage uh, for new projects siga yeah, i think uh, raw material is uh, you know again a very important factor to construct any project and uh, especially the biggest challenge which i see or you know what uh, i hear from the construction players is that cost of the raw materials you know that has really skyrocketed in last two years post covid which has uh, put lot of projects in uh, a very difficult position because their cost has gone well above their budgeted uh, cost and also apart from that getting good quality raw material is very important same way you know the logistic cost has increased so you know it's very important that you get the right raw material from the nearest location so that you can save logistic cost because of you know the increase in the fuel prices logistics cost has also in, uh, increased tremendously so these are very important factors so uh, you know some of the cases are there where big projects will have their own you know crushing units at the sites they will you know crush their own aggregate or they will have you know the sand making uh, machines also will be uh, making sands at the site cement obviously they have to get from the nearest uh, cement locations or cement plants vitamins are also there so these are you know very critical raw materials where the planning is required and as well as backup has to be there because in today's uncertain times you cannot depend on only one source uh, you have to have multiple source so that you can uh, you know uh, maintain the supply to have better execution and uh, good speed of thank you mr mudish for your comments on this particular aspect 
Mr. Vikas, how what are the challenges you face in terms of obtaining raw material? Raw material is a major issue now because uh, in city we can get the raw material easily but on highways it's very difficult sometimes we get raw material from around 100 kilometers 120 kilometers the cost of raw material is less but the transportation is very high so getting raw material in nowadays it's very tough and in covid times it was more difficult actually and many of the quarries has been banned by the pollution board so that is also an issue so the solution which what I think is that uh, if we mill the existing surface and we can use and recycle the aggregates, so it will help us to get more raw materials from there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you Can you add more details about recycling process because now that you're talking, you're hearing more about recycling aggregates and using it into various applications. Uh, recycling as per IRC and as per CRRI, I think only 30% can be used. Old aggregate which are polished and clean that can be used in new project. And new uh, recycled aggregates only 30 to 40% can be used and 60% new aggregates has to be used. So this is the, I, I think the milled aggregate has to be polished and then only can be used. This is the actually process. It's simple. Thank you, I. That's absolutely thanks for explaining us about the aggregates and the process and the uh, challenges towards the raw material, obtaining raw materials for the entire construction and rich, rich construction process. Yeah. I would like to uh, invite Mr. Nitish to uh, take this forward for a closing of the session. Thank you, panelists, for sharing your valuable thoughts on ideas for better roads and bridges. We hope you all have enjoyed the session. Before wrapping up, we would like to thank our distinguished panelists. Mr. Monish Taneja and Mr. Vikas Sharma. I would also like to thank our associate editor, Ms. Mega Ayer, and our editor, Mr. Prasad Nair, for taking this initiative. To get more updates from B2B Purchase, you can follow our social media pages. Also, our application is available on Google Play and App Store for enhanced reading. So with this, we would like to announce the closing of today's session. Kindly stay tuned for more such sessions. Thank you, stay safe, and goodbye.